If you're an average musician and not a computer science major, the inner workings of MIDI can look a little confusing. This video provides a basic technical foundation that will help you understand the other videos in this series. For an introduction to the hardware side of MIDI, be sure to check out my MIDI for the Arduino circuit analysis video. If you look at the MIDI implementation chart in the back of your synth manual, it may look like it's written in a different language. MIDI uses some numbering systems that you may not be familiar with. There are three types of numbers you'll come across. First is decimal. Decimal is the 10 digit numbering system that you've used since childhood. You can also refer to it as base 10. Second is hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a 16 digit numbering system that better reflects how computers deal with numbers. You can also refer to it as base 16. Finally, we have binary. Binary is a two digit or base two way of counting. Computers actually work in binary exclusively. The other numbering systems were created to make things easier for us to read. Now let's look at each numbering system in more detail. First we'll start with decimal, the one you know already. Decimal uses the numbers 0 to 9 to represent 10 digits. Now let's compare this with hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a 16 number counting system. For the first 10 numbers we can use the numbers 0 to 9 just like in decimal. But we need some more symbols to represent the other six numbers. We'll use the letters A to F to represent these numbers. It's a little confusing at first, but just remember that in hexadecimal, we count from zero to F. Now let's take a look at binary. Each digit in binary is referred to as a bit, and it can only have two states, off or on. We use the number zero to represent an off state and one to represent an on state. Right now, we're looking at a four bit number. These four bits can be represented by one hexadecimal digit. So let's look at how we can convert between the two systems. We'll assign a number value to each of the four bits. The rightmost bit is given the value one. And then moving towards the left, the next bit is given a value of two, the third bit has a value of 4, and the last bit has a value of 8. To convert this binary number to hexadecimal, we just need to add up all the bits that are in the on state. Let's try a couple of examples. Right now, all the bits are in the zero or off state. So if we add them all together, we get zero, and our hexadecimal value is therefore zero. In this next example, notice that the third bit is now on. All the other bits are off, so if we add up the total, the total is four. In this example, bits one, two, and three are all on. So I would add four plus two plus one, which would give me a hexadecimal value of seven. In this final example, all the bits are on. So I would add one plus two plus four plus eight, which would give me a total of 15. But remember, in hexadecimal, the 15th digit is represented by F. Here's a reference table showing 16 digits in decimal, hexadecimal, and binary. Make sure you understand how these numbering systems relate to each other. We now know that one hexadecimal digit can represent a 4-bit binary number. In computer terms, this number is referred to as a nibble. If we group two nibbles together, we'll come up with a 8-bit number represented by two hex digit. This is referred to as a byte. We can use the two digits in a byte to represent larger numbers. Just like you can use two decimal numbers to count from 0 to 99, we can use two hexadecimal numbers to count from 0 to FF. This is the equivalent of counting from 0 to 255 in decimal. Now let's look at how these numbering systems are used in MIDI. 
The first part of a MIDI message is called the status byte. It lets the instrument know what type of message to expect. Following the status byte will be one or more data bytes. This is the actual content of the message. Let's look at the status byte in more detail. In this example, the status byte has a hexadecimal value of 90. The first number in the status byte is the MIDI command. Each command type in MIDI has a unique number. 9 represents a note on command. The second number in the byte represents the MIDI channel. If your MIDI instrument is set to this channel number, it will respond to this message. If not, it will simply ignore it. We only have one hex digit to represent the channel number, so its range can be from 0 to F, which gives us 16 different values. But as you know from your MIDI keyboard, there is no such thing as MIDI channel 0. To get the channel number as it will appear on your MIDI keyboard, add 1 to the hex value of the channel number. For your reference, here's a list of the MIDI command numbers and the messages that they represent. Now let's take a closer look at a MIDI data byte. A data byte can represent anything from a key number to velocity to the position of your pitch bend control. Now here's an important fact about data bytes. The highest bit of the data byte is always set to zero. Knowing what we now know about hex and binary, this limits the range of the number from zero to seven F. That equals 0 to 127 in decimal. That means that a data byte can represent 128 different values. Let's take another look at the MIDI manual from the start of the video and see if it makes more sense. Let's look at the note on command in the second row. Let's start with the status byte. The first four bits of the byte are set to 1001, which as we now know is hex value 9. And if you remember, 9 is the MIDI command for note on. The second four bits of the byte are represented with the letter N, which the chart tells us means channel. They're not specifying these bits because they could be anything from 0 to F, depending on the MIDI channel that you select. Now let's move to data byte 1. First, notice that the highest bit of the byte is set at zero, just like we discussed. The rest of the bits are represented with the letter K, which the chart tells us means key. It also tells us that it has a range of zero to 127, which makes total sense for a seven bit number. The second data byte is almost identical, except they replace the Ks with Vs to represent velocity. So to sum up, a note on command starts with the hex digit 9, has a 4-bit channel number, the first data byte has 7 bits available to represent the key number, and the second data byte has 7 bits to represent the velocity. Now see if you can figure out the rest of the commands in the table. Here's a helpful tip. Your Windows PC comes with a built-in tool that will make converting number systems very simple. Open the Windows calculator and go to the View menu and set it to Programmer. We now have the options to work in decimal, hexadecimal, or binary. With decimal selected, type in a number you want to convert. If you now select hex or binary, the display will automatically convert the number. Also notice that the binary value is always available under the main display window. You can convert the other way by starting out in hex mode and then changing to decimal or binary. This type of calculator is also available on a Mac computer. Hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of the language of MIDI and will help clear up confusion as we use these concepts in future videos. Until next time, visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials. Now go make some noise.